Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about creating a reverb in Bitwig Studio. And your first question is probably why do I should care? Why do I should create another reverb? I have already 50,000 reverb plugins installed and uh, what's the problem? And I have no real answer to that, uh, but it's fun. And most of the times you learn how things work in the background. And also sometimes you create unique effects that are unique to your song in unique to your kind of sound you create so um, you can tinker and tweak reverbs exactly like you want it to be and what kind of sound you are going for so i want to show you some things you can do in the grid and also with native but bitwig devices so here we have just a one instrument track on there as a piano tag just a dry piano sound okay so um i've also got an auto level on there i showed you this in the recent videos um it's just so you i keep the i keep a nice loudness to everything because we tweak around with reverbs and all pass devices and feedback and so on so this makes sure that you can hear it pretty clearly what I'm doing. So um, I start with the grid. So we use an FX grid. Uh, later I show you probably also how you can create a reverb just with normal devices, but you probably already know that. So this video is more about creating stuff in the grid. And the easiest way to diffuse something is to use an R pass, of course, you probably already know that. So now it sounds like this. And you can hear the reverb or the delays, delay taps. So you can hear each individual tap, right? So dit, 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 dit. and what we want trying to do is we try to fill in the gaps in between these individual taps to kind of diffuse the signal to make it smooth, right? Reverb usually sounds like this when you use the native reverb. It's a smooth, long fade out. That's what we're trying to achieve. We don't want to have a, an echo, right? Like this. So this is called diffusion. And you can do this by using multiple RPAS devices and then tweak each delay time of each of these devices. So we have 33 here, so maybe go to 40. Maybe to 60 right so we try to make different delays or echoes and each echo has a different delay timing so you have taps that are not on the same position in time so you fill in the gaps right so it's much smoother now and the more you do that the smoother the signal becomes and you can be pretty precise with these numbers here. You can calculate that to have a real precise scaling here or going up with these numbers, increasing of, of the number. Uh, but you can also just dial it in manually by hand by just, you know, guessing some numbers or finding some, some numbers that works for you. Uh, but some people are like it very, very precise. So you can calculate that if you want to. But I prefer most of the times to just dial in some, some numbers I think are right and to get a different sound. It's like improvising on the piano, right? Instead of just calculating the notes. So now you can do this forever, yeah? And there are multiple ways of um, combining our past devices. You can do it like this in serial here. It's the, it's the easiest way of doing that. But you can also do it in parallel. You, you know, scale it up here vertically and then you mix it together. It has, everything has pro and cons. So here the problem is after some while, after some, after some stacking, you can hear 
The signal is much smoother, but you also build up in a certain frequency area because they have all static frequencies or static delay times. So it gets a bit metallic sound to it. So we can prevent that by implementing a normal delay here at some point and then modulating the delay time, which gives you some kind of pitch effect. So we use an LFO, for instance, we can use an LFO. And we disable here the re-triggering. So you, want to, you don't want to re-trigger the LFO every time you press a key. So this gives you then clicks at certain points. Here we just want to have this free running and we also want to go probably to Hertz. You can also sync this here to your project tempo, by, but I prefer your free running Hertz numbers. If you go to audio rate, it almost sounds like a spring reverb. If you're going for that sound. But I prefer a slow. Not too much, just a tad. Just change a bit the pitch timing. So this is something you can do. Then the next problem is that it takes some time for the original try signal to pass through all the devices and coming out here at the end. So you press basically a key, then it takes some time and then you hear the reverb. So you can bring in the dry signal, which is okay in this case. But when you create more or longer things here, longer chains, then the contrast between the dry signal and the wet signal is too much, too high. So then you can hear that you mix basically together a tri signal with no reverb at all and then a super wet long reverb that has nothing to do with the tri signal anymore. So you can, or what I do sometimes is to use a mixer and mix in certain stages here of this chain. So let's say we have here the first input is the whole chain. The second input is then maybe something here after after three devices. And then we have also your stage after the first all pass, right? So we blend in multiple stages on diff or on diff bring out different stages here. Um, so this, this this one is a bit drier. This one is a bit is wet. And this one is then the longest one. So you can combine all three together. And the signal becomes, of course, a bit louder. So we can make this a bit minus six, minus 12. Scale is also a bit. You can also say I would want to have this on the left side and this on the right side if you want to. So it's up to you. Easy. So at the end, we probably also want to have a low pass to just to narrow down the frequency range of the wet signal. Also, maybe a high pass just to get rid of some low rumble that builds up maybe over time. Maybe 80 or 100 hertz, something like this. Maybe a bit steeper filter here. Also a nice trick could be to use a chorus, maybe at the start here. And there is an algorithm here called eight voices. So it splits the signal up into eight paths and then kind of uh, pitch modulates it. So we don't need to do that here. You can also just use a chorus if you want to, or both. And 
then maybe use also chorus here for the mid signal with a different setting maybe you can also choose a different algorithm if you want to so there are so many possibilities here So this is something you can do. Um, then we can maybe also, let's see, use a mod delay here at the end. And because we have here already a diffused signal going into the mod delay, the mod delay itself doesn't sound that much like a delay anymore because we already fill in some gaps in between the delay tabs. Okay, so it makes the whole reverb a bit longer, extending its time. Maybe we blend here the try signal or the diffuse signal with the mod delayer together. Also bring down at the low pass, a bit lesser feedback. And maybe a second one. And we can also maybe utilize here, let's see, the output of the LFO and modulate the delay time of the mod delay just a tad just to get some movement in there and here of course with the second one we want to have different delay timing maybe a shorter one well, let's go to six and again use a mixer to mix this together. So it's not something you need to copy to 100%. Like I, I just make the stuff up. It's not the patch I know or you have to patch it this way. You can go in every kind of direction. It's all about diffusing the signal and combining, recombining it with different stuff, right? So it's really up to you this can look much much different on your screen than on mine here but just making this stuff up so this is not the patch i know or i rebuilt something um adjust using delays and all parts devices to diffuse and extend the signal in time um so what else um we can also just disable this here for a moment and use a different fx grid and implement a pitch shifter so we use a long delay and we use an LFO and I also showed you this in a video how you do this and I want to go to ramp signal here we can use here the um, what's it called the skew um, to create a ramp or a saw kind of and then we probably want to go to Hertz because we want to want to have this independent from the BPM we are having in our project. You probably want to use the reverb in multiple projects with different BPM times. And this one, the, the speed of the LFO decides of the pitch. So we want to have this independent from the project. And we also want to disable here the re-triggering because every time we press a key on the keyboard, we don't want to re-trigger the LFO phase. So now we modulate here this uh, offset by 50% let's say so now you can see it's moving here from the LFO and let's play a sound so we can pitch up the sound here with a bit of clicks in there so I use a tuner and I'm playing probably when this is disabled the C note C4 Perfect, so we want to go for C5. So around here. Nice, so we have C5. So 
So we create basically a pitch shifted, one octave higher pitch shifted signal from the original audio. The only problem is that we have these cracks in there. And the cracks happening every time we go back here or we jump from one to zero. Let's use an oscilloscope, you can see it. Um, right, so you can see here, we have this ramp signal every time we go back from one to zero or from zero to one, we get this crackling. So the solution to that is um, that we fade out the signal every time we pass this phase here of zero going to one. And the easiest way to do that is, in my opinion, to use a mirror and use the same signal, the same ramp signal and mirror it. So it looks like this. You can see it in purple here. Yeah? So every time we have here a jump from zero to one, uh, you can't see. Um, freeze this in time here, yeah, sadly. Um, every time we go from zero to one, we have this jump. Um, the mirror signal is basically zero and goes up to one when we are in the midst of this ramp and then it goes back to zero again. So it goes up and down basically. And this is something we use here to modulate the volume. So we can use an attenuate for that and say, we have zero volume, so nothing goes out. And then we use the mirror signal here right, and modulate the volume. So every time we hit here, we go from zero to one, we are at zero volume. So it looks like this, or well, it sounds like this. So we can try to minimize this kind of tremolo effect a bit by, by using a bend. We bend the signal here. You can see here it's the, you can see it on the purple line. So we do something like this. It's maybe too much. So we minimize basically the time where the volume is low and we maximize the phase where the volume is high until we So we're trying basically to mute the zero crossing. That's what we are trying to do here. So, and we can, instead of just using this modulator and this attenuate, we can also just use an multiply, which basically does the same. So now we have a nice pitch shifter without these crackles. And we can take this whole thing here and put this here in our first patch and just trying to utilize it. We can say we want to have something after the first two all-pass devices going under the pitch shifter. Then we use additional all-pass devices here for the output. Just smooth the signal out a bit more. Maybe make it even higher. And then go back here into this. Um, let's try out this sounds. You can hear the pitched up signal. So here we can take a long delay and just offset this whole pitch signal by maybe three taps or four taps. So it comes in way later. Or maybe even longer. So there you have it. Small little pitch shifter in your reverb. It's almost like a shimmer reverb. Make it a bit quieter. 15.
maybe take this out here. Okay. So this is something we can do. So another thing we can do is to take this whole chain, so everything we just did, and feed it back into the beginning of the reverb. So making a, a feedback chain to make this reverb even bigger. So we take a long delay here, take everything, all the pitch shifting, all the diffusion, you know, all the combinations, all the mod delays. We take this and bring it back in with the blend at the beginning. And maybe also uh, volume here, so we can increase the feedback amount. Let's try this out. Maybe zoom in here a bit. I can hear it's building up. In the low end, yeah. To so take here some filtering, low pass, high pass. We don't need the whole frequency spectrum. You know, 150 hertz. Maybe up to 3K, yeah, it's okay. So now you can hear that we have even higher pitches because we take the signal, go in with the signal, the piano here, pitch it up, go do everything, and then feed it back in again. And then we take the pitched up signal and pitch it even higher. So it goes up and up and up and up, right? And because this is delayed, we have some kind of stair effect or quantized stepping up over time. I think this is okay. Um, so what else? We can maybe add in another chorus here, maybe here. Pull this down, 8V, divide. We can also bring in another mod delay here at the end. And maybe a blend. Just to extend the lifetime of this reverb a bit longer. Four notes, seven maybe. A bit of feedback. Volume knob at the end. We can increase the wet signal a bit. Nice. So let's create a macro here. And we have these delay times, and I showed you at the beginning, I just dialed these in. We can do something like bringing everything down to zero milliseconds. Whoops. Um, and then use the macro basically to scale this up over time. So we can say we want to increase here by um, maybe 100. Here we, now we have to dial everything down here first. 
So again, you can calculate this by how many you want to increase this. So I take here 100, then we have here 200, maybe um, 300. So when this macro is on zero, everything is zero milliseconds. So no delay at all. Uh, 400. If you're 500. Sometimes I wish you just could double click here and then type in the number instead of, you know, clicking here then clicking here and then typing in the number there. It's a bit cumbersome, but for now it's okay. It's basically, it's, uh, it's optimized for having a hands-on experience, which, which is good. It's not an instrument builder. So what we are doing here is basically, I would say, pretty edgy. All right, we have also these all pass devices here. So you can see the lo delays or the reverb is now much longer. So we take this down here to 10, this to 20, and then scale this up here by 100 or 300 here. This by 600. Well, let's go to 900. And not even touch something with a stereo spread or anything. I mean, we get some stereo effects here with the chorus and modulation and so on. But you can also say, I want to make here a complete line for the left side. And then you do another line for the right side with different delay timings, which makes it even wider and bigger. There are so many possibilities actually you can, you can do if you want to, if you're creative enough. <laughs> If you have time enough, then you can all can do all these kinds of things. Um, so I think it sounds pretty nice so far. Um, should bring out here the high pass but the flow pass okay so that's fine so this is something you can do in the grid and I do this all the time or well, not all the time but from time to time and I've also piled up some reverbs on my Patreon. So the last one I added was, um, it's called Retribution Reverb here. I did, uh, I think last week. And it looks a bit different, right? It's the different um, patching here and has also a different sound, but it's kind of in the same style. You have some choruses in there, uh, some a lot of modulations and also different timings for the left and right. So it gives a different feel, a different sound. Uh, it's a unique reverb I can use. There's also a stretch knob here where I can stretch out the whole reverb, makes it. You can 
see the mix knob here is also at 100%, so you can still hear the try signal because I made sure that the early signals are coming out straight of the of the effect here. So it's a nice blend of dry and wet. They don't even need to need to use the mix knob here. You can hear the late, late um, delay tap. Maybe it lacks a bit of low end for drone, but and I switch on here the this pedal. So yeah, this kind of stuff is something I just shared on my Patreon and I probably also use this reverb here and flash it out a bit, add some macros to it, maybe some remotes, then also share it there. But I want to take this video to show you how you can easily build something in the grid by just stacking these devices here and just, you know, um, create your own reverb, your own unique effect device. So not only you can use the grid, you can also, um, so we have your pitch shifter on there, auto level, okay. You can also take just use delay plus, right? Where we have here this whole diffusion thing here, just behind this drop down. So you have different diffusion networks here. For instance, you can take the space one long with more modulation and spread. So you can take the short route and just take this, but the drawback is you can't modify it. It's just, a drop down you can choose and that's it here you can tweak it to your liking maybe add some unusual effects in there some different modulations for different sound but sometimes it's enough to just use that or use an vsd device then just giving you options basically it's not something you need to do but you can do it So maybe something like this, or just use a reverb here and put this reverb or this delay plus with the diffusion network in the tank FX. Build up. Make it nice and smooth. Also on the wet FX, we need the chorus, chorus plus. Feedback down, eight voices, modulation depth, speed pretty slow. You can also take here this um, pitch shifter and put it in there, maybe here. Let me take the delay plus here and also take it here again just duplicated but here we take the reversed one so you can make a reverb out of the reverb with different other reverbs too to have a special reverb the stock reverb here of bitwig studio I, I think it's never meant to be used in this native form you always always have to look for uh, presets here you get a lot of presets with bitwig studio just use them um, the stock reverb is just an a basic diffusion network with no modulation really i think so you have to make use of the tank fx to modulate the pitch or the delay times get some bit of wobble in there um but most people just you know put the stock reverb on something and then oh this sounds like shit because yeah it's just you know it's just basic diffusion there's nothing really big in there 
that makes it sound great. So here we have now a pitch shifter in there, a nice chorus. Make the lay time here a bit longer. A bit more feedback. Maybe delay two here at the end. Brings in more modulation. We have also the tune option here. So changing the pitch or delay times is always a good thing. If you want to have this lush reverb. Of course, this is not the real, real space, but it's it's more like a creative, um, a creative effect, right? And on top of that, we can can use the convolution reverb here, which brings in some real spaces. The drawback of a convolution reverb is, of course, that it's a static sample and it's always the same sample. You know, it's, it can be a bit, it can sound a bit boring over time. But if you combine that with all kinds of uh, algorithmic reverbs, then it's yeah pretty powerful. So we bring here basically our piano sound into a real space. Um, is there yeah, a smaller space maybe? Attic? Wooden attic? So right, this is our piano. So we bring the piano in a real space and then we use the algorithmic reverbs on that. Right? So it's all about combining things. Um, so maybe we can mix this in or maybe say we have a chain device here there's a convolution in there mixed and uh, this one and also our crazy unique reverb here we put this also in there make it active mix it in a bit so now we have like one reverb chain here maybe delete this here called crazy And you can use this to create also pet sounds for your sampler, where you just sample this stuff. So it's not a real space, it's more like a creative free verb space. Uh, to create real spaces or recreate all the reverb units. Um, there's of course more work involved and more research to actually get an idea of what they did back then. But for me, pff, I don't care. I just want to create nice, lush reverb artificial uh, things. So I just, you know, fiddle around in the grid until it sounds nice or find something I like. Um, okay, so now that we have this, can we do something else? Oh yeah, I want to show you how to create some pads with that so we can amplify the mix a bit. Let's see. And maybe a cue here at the end, to get rid of some frequencies. I pass. So we want to sample a higher pitch. So something like this, C6 or something. Maybe get rid of some overtones. 
There's a lot of feedback here, actually. Let's pull this down here a bit. It's maybe a bit too much, but... Just for the sake of this video to show you stuff. Okay. So now we have tweaked this here a bit. Or limited in frequency range. We can just... Paint in here some kind of node. Take C C5. You probably guessed it. it just bounce this out. Post failure. And then we stick this into the sampler. Actually, this is sound here, yeah. Sampler. Do we have the bounce? Let's amplify this a bit. And it's probably, uh, I don't know, C6 or something. And here we have a lot of rumble in there but i really like to sample higher pitches and then pitch it down in the sampler where it brings out all the nice little artifacts and dirt and so on it's a bit of maybe too much rumble so we can use here band pass brings to c3 go to 100 here of pit key tracking Then we can take here the same reverb, put this on this one again. Let's see how this sounds. Maybe bring out the space. Oh yeah, maybe take the auto level also. At the end. Zoop. something you can try out and to make your own uh, pad sounds with the reverb it's actually a nice pad machine using some random input source vocals are nice um, some saw waves are nice um, but you can try out random stuff and then just put a long ass reverb on that sample it put it in the sampler pitch it down it always sounds nice in some way okay um okay that's it for this video i think let's delete this here um thanks for watching if you have questions leave it in the comments subscribe to the channel thumbs up if you like the video and maybe think about a subscription on patreon because i share uh these uh presets on my patreon and uh, you can download it then and have some fun thanks for watching and see you in the next video Bye.